Hi everyone, I'm Alex McDermott and today we're addressing a popular topic in immersion cooling and that's the compatibility of servers with immersion. Uh, today I'm joined by Oriol. We couldn't have anyone more qualified to answer these questions as our ecosystem tech lead and OCP lead. Oriol, can you explain what your role here at Summer involves? Sure, thank you Alex. So uh, I begin at Summer like three years and a half more or less at this moment and um, we have seen that one of the big fears of the industry when adopting immersion was about the, the server adoption, right? So um, my role as of today is uh, to be very close to the server vendors, the server industry in the world and helping them remove these fears when developing servers for immersion, we're designing them for immersion. Um, so basically we have a, an amazing team here at Summer that counts with a few labs in the world that are actually uh, helping those server vendors, enable them with testing and validation services so, so those servers can be designed and born for immersion from the very beginning and, and adopt, adopt that uh, density that is what it's making us different from the rest. So can you explain what exactly it is that differentiates an immersion server from an air-cooled server? Sure, so the main benefit or the main difference is the density. Um, in an air server, just because of the heat that is generated inside the server, you need to count on a lot of fans, plastics, uh, let's say devices that are directing the flow inside the server to make sure that that heat is released out from the server. While in immersion, uh, you don't need to have that many, let's say, components that are helping do that. Um, the tank is taking care of that part by pumping the fluid from the bottom to the top of the server. So you can just have uh, servers which are way more dense, so they have more CPU, more RAM, more storage, more compute components, and, and in way less space, right? So maybe an air server can take up to two, three, four U's, and we can achieve that just in one U, maybe in immersion. So that's the biggest difference, probably. So once we have an immersion-ready server, how does the fluid affect these servers once they're submerged? So. Here, the chemical team that we have at Summer, Summer was, by the way, one of the, of the first or probably the only company who started in the immersion world, but with our own fluid. So we have more than eight years of experience uh, of testing about the affix of the fluid on the several components. We have a material compatibility list that the chemical team is reviewing uh, every year to make sure that new materials cannot impact the fluid or the fluid can impact those materials in immersion. So we have, we are very experienced on that. So I will say that as of today, um, there is not actually a big affection from, from the fluid to the components because they are already reviewed. So you are just not installing them in the servers or any component that ends up in the tank. And what does the material compatibility testing entail exactly? So it's basically a few tests where we, are, we have test rigs specialized for that. Um, where we are just uh, putting these components for a few time and at certain temperatures and we see if uh, the component is polluting or contaminating the, the fluid, so it's affecting the, the capabilities, the electric capabilities of the fluid. Or if another chance would you have the fluid affecting the components, so for example, time before the silicones are and a very good example, they are not very accepted in the fluid, so they inflate or they break or they stiffen, they get, the cables are getting very tight. So um, we have other components that we recommend to our partners and providers that they can just uh, manufacture those cables or those plastics differently. Um, so again, there is a few components that are not allowed, other ones which are accepted and other ones which are perfectly long lasting in the fluid with no issue. And are there any benefits we can experience from using servers in immersion? Yeah, of course. So uh, the first one is that, um, as we have been seeing during these years of experience, the, the MTBF, the mean time between failure, it's way lower than comparing to air, right? There is no vibrations, there is no dust, the temperature is very stable, so the components are failing way less than in an air environment. Um, this is not something that we say, of course, this is something that we already have seen with several uh, server providers that they are telling us um, that when they provide warranty for immersion servers, the, the, the SLA of, of failure is way lower, so they don't need to spend that much money into those components. So um, that's, that's a big benefit. Um, then we also have uh, the other side, which is, of course, again, the density, so we can have more in less space. 
And, and last but, but not least, you need less materials comparing to an air server <coughs> or a direct-to-chip server, which is meant of a lot of copper and tubes. So probably the immersion server is the lightest one. It's the one with less components required because the fluid is just going everywhere. So you don't need, uh, again, plastics, uh, directed flows, fans, uh, big heat sinks, all of this is removed. So you can just have whatever you require and have it in a, in a reduced space. So that's mainly it. And how are you seeing the server and component manufacturers collaborating with us? We have been having a trending lately, so um, from the very beginning the server vendors were taking all of the ownership for all the warranty and whatever happens to that server. Um, it is true that with the silicon uh, providers it's taking a bit longer because those are at the end the most expensive uh, components in a server, the CPU, the GPU, so those are taking a bit longer on warranty um, and we are doing testing with them by the way uh, to enable that in the next future. Um, but at the moment, we already have been approached by other like storage, memory, power supply units, providers, which they want to test and validate their components for immersion because they see the upcoming demand already. Um, so this, is will, this will also help the server vendor to do not need to own all of the warranty by themselves. But also if, for example, uh, a storage device gets broken, they can send it back as well to the manufacturer and it's not the server, and the server vendor owning the entire warranty for the component at their own. Mm. I'd like to ask you what you think it is about immersion that's attracting these companies to get involved. Like, what's the most exciting aspect for you? It's the big change that it's supposed, right? Um, we have been having an industry of air that hasn't changed for the last 60, 70 years, and we have been doing the thing just on the same way. So um, we had more heat, we bring more cold air, or we put a bigger fan, or we create a bigger heat sink. So that was the trending. Um, and probably now is the first time that the combination of the sustainability aspect, uh, where the world is start to thinking on, oh, the usage of water, of electricity, natural resources, and the contamination that these data centers suppose to the world, and the people is not <laughs> very aware of this, but they are making a big impact, and our demand is more and more, Netflix, platform, social network. Um, so this big change that the industry is starting to accept that the, the things cannot just be done like before, where we can just make the things bigger or more powerful and, and, and waste more natural resources or electricity or water, now it's different. So it is not anymore of having a rack with a lot of servers and big fans making noise, but maybe just having more of this compute in a reduced space, in a cooled environment, in, a, in immersion, um, so you still can take advantage of that space that you have in the data center, but being more efficient and and for sure being more, um, let's say, considered with the world, right? Um, again, there is tremendous numbers about the electricity and water at these data centers, all data centers as of today are wasting. So that's one of the amazing changes we see with this uh, industry adoption. Well, it looks like the time for immersion is now. Thank you for your insights, Oriol. Uh, we're going to add a list of brands with immersion roadmaps in the description below so you can have a look at servers that are ready to go into our pods. Uh, and if you'd like advice on which servers best suit your project, we have a lot of experts on hand, such as Oreo. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. See you next time. Submer. Data centers that make sense.